Mr Speaker. The Honourable Christopher Finlinson. Mr Speaker, I rise to speak to three bills being addressed in a novel manner this afternoon so that they can be considered by the Māori Affairs Select Committee as quickly as possible. That great chair of that committee, the Honourable To Henare, is a tiger for punishment, keen to get on with the job as quickly as he can. The first bill is the Nawai o Maniapoto Waipa River Bill, which gives effect to a deed by the Crown and Maniapoto signed at Tikuiti on 27 September 2010. I acknowledge their representatives who are here this afternoon and thank them for their commitment, for their patience and for their hard work. The bill provides for Maniapoto to, to participate in the co-governance and co-management of the Waipa River and adds the upper Waipa River to the arrangements put in place last year. This river is of deep cultural significance to Maniapoto. For the people of Maniapoto, their relationship with the Waipa River gives rise to responsibilities to protect te mana o te wai and to exercise their kaitiakitanga in accordance with their long-established tikanga. The involvement of Maniapoto will be key in addressing environmental concerns and in achieving the long-term health of the river. In the area of the upper Waipa River in particular, the people of Maniapoto have a significant stake in the social economic and environmental well-being of the community by virtue of their numbers and the extent of Māori land-based economic development. This bill now needs to proceed without delay to ensure that critical steps such as the initial review of the vision and strategy are comprehensive and so that there's a proper legal basis to factor the upper Waipa River into these very, very important developments. There's a strong sense of shared aspiration, not only uh, among iwi, but also the community at large, to improve the health of the Waipa and the Waikato rivers. This bill is the final ingredient to put the framework in place. It's an initiative whose time has come so that generations in the future can enjoy a healthy river that sustains abundant life and prosperous communities. I now turn to the Ngāti Paro Claim Settlement Bill, and I've, I too welcome the Ngāti Paro representatives who have joined us today for this historic occasion. Treaty settlements involve commitment and courage. They are often involve difficult trade-offs, both personally and professionally, by those who work on them. I want to pay tribute to the leadership, pragmatism and hard work of the negotiating teams of the iwi who are with us today. It's through the diligent labour of these people that we've reached this point. I acknowledge those who are no longer with us, particularly Koro Jews, who in a long and distinguished career helped to lay the foundation of this settlement through his work in establishing Te Runanga o Ngāti Paro. I am so sorry that he didn't live to see the introduction of this bill, but I'm heartened that he lived long enough to see this settlement through to its near completion. Mr Speaker, Ngāti Paro has travelled a long road to have their claims addressed by the Crown. After many years of preparation, formal negotiations began in 2008. The Crown recognised the mandate of Te Runanga o Ngāti Paro in April that year. Negotiations with Te Hayata, the negotiations subcommittee, commenced in July 2008. A non-binding high-level agreement outlining key elements of financial and commercial redress was signed by the Crown and Ngāti Paro on 23 October 2008. After a period of robust negotiations, a deed of settlement was signed or initialed in October 2010. And I pause to acknowledge the work of my Chief Crown negotiator, Paul Swain, an excellent fellow. I'm so bipartisan, I can work with anyone. During uh, November and December last year, Te Runanga o Ngāti Paro undertook a ratification process for the deed of settlement and the proposed post-governance entity. 91% of the registered adult members of Ngāti Paro who voted, voted in favour of, of accepting the deed of settlement, and 92.5% voted in favour of accepting the proposed governance arrangements. Mr Speaker, this is a great day for Ngāti Paro, and I acknowledge Mr Horamia 
and uh, his help at the very initial stages uh, of the negotiation. The real grunt work, of course, was done by me. Uh, <laughs> finally, finally, I turned to the Ngāti Pahuera Treaty Claim Settlement Bill, and I, I too welcome Ngāti Pahuera representatives who have joined us today. Uh, there are many other members of Ngāti Pahuera in the Hawke's Bay and around New Zealand who will be watching this today, and I acknowledge them. Uh, Ngāti Pahuera have also travelled a long road to have their claims addressed by the Crown. In 1994, the Māori Land Court made an order appointing eight people to represent this confederation in the prosecution and settlement of treaty claims against the Crown. The Tribunal reported on the historic claims in 1992, the very, very important Mohaka River report, uh, and in 2004. In May 2008, terms of negotiation were signed for a combined negotiation of their historical Treaty of Waitangi claims and also their foreshore and seabed interests. An, an agreement in principle setting out the broad components of the Crown settlement offer was signed on 30 September 2008. Since then, the trustees uh, and the Crown have negotiated intensively, and I pause here to acknowledge the contribution of my Chief Crown negotiator, former Labour MP Fran Wilde, an excellent person, again proving my bipartisanship. A draft deed of settlement to settle the treaty claims was ready for ratification on 4 November 2010, and on a wonderful day, 17 December 2010, in the company of Mr uh, Horomia, we signed the deed of settlement at Mohaka. It was a wonderful occasion for all who attended. The deed of settlement signed then is conditional on the passage of this bill. So I want to acknowledge all Ngāti Pahuera tu, uh, Tupuna, uh, and I want to acknowledge from, uh, all those who from the beginning have worked for the, for the good uh, of Ngāti Pahuera. Uh, Mr Speaker, the trustees of the Development Trust and their council have negotiated with great resolve and determination, and the settlement package they have achieved is a very good one. Throughout this process, they have been unfailingly polite and dignified. I've certainly enjoyed working with them, uh, and I acknowledge their patience uh, when they were prepared to defer discussion of their foreshore and seabed interests while the 2004 Act was being reviewed. Uh, settling this claim is an important further step in this country's progress towards settling all historical treaty claims, and settling the Ngāti Pahuera treaty claims will be a first in the Hawke's Bay region. Mr Speaker, the passage of this bill begins the last stage in a settlement that seeks to recognise what is important to the people of Ngāti Pahuera and to provide redress for breaches of the treaty. Mr Speaker, these three settlements are among the many settlements this government uh, has been progressing uh, towards its aspirational goal of settling all historical Treaty of Waitangi claims by 2014. I want to thank all parties for their cooperation in enabling the bills to proceed in this manner. Uh, I acknowledge, uh, because authorship is important, that the original idea came from the Chief Opposition Whip, Mr Barker, and I thank him for his suggestion. Uh, that does not mean to say they will be rushed through the Māori Affairs Select Committee, as some rather unkind people are saying. They will be dealt with individually, they will be dealt with carefully, uh, but this is a sensible way of progressing treaty bills uh, so that people can enjoy the fruits of their labour as quickly as possible. Uh, the Honourable 